guys. Um, about to uh, go over a steel engine check today. They, they store these here, and they um, this was a, uh, a sheet put together by Eddie Anderson down at, at the steel factory at Virginia Beach. He's the kind of the guy that everything went to if there was a, uh, a issue that either the dealer or the distributor was having a, a problem figuring out. And it, there was always an issue of, well, what did you check so far? What did you check this? Did you check this? So what he did was was kind of put together a a quick little, just a super fast way to run through it and and to make sure that everything was done. And they could uh, he could ask him, well, what did you get on step number twelve? And and then they say, well, I I didn't do step number twelve. Well, then he'd say, well, you know, go go do step twelve with the rest of the sheet. And, and if you can't figure it out, call me back. So this turned out being an amazing tool. And the, uh, so, it, so it kind of just walks through all the different different things that need checked. And, and of course, the first one starts with the, uh, with, with the customer's name. And, and, and so we we'll always try to, uh, we'll, um, we'll, uh, put, we'll just put shop down here. And because this is one of our shop saws, but anytime that something comes in, that uh, you, you know, we need to look at. We well, we don't have to guess. And, and let, let me ask, add another part of this. Let's say we're we're starting on a machine, and and and, and we get down to step number eight, and something else comes up. And it, I, you guys know how that is. You you're working, and, and then somebody walks through the door, and they got a little problem need solved, and and then you come back, and you're working on the machine, and it's been three hours. And you're like, ah, oh, where did I leave off? Well, with this, we can we can see that real easy. We say, oh, we made it down to. To step number eight or wherever we stop that and we can just pick right up taking off with it the other thing too is sometimes it, it, it a machine might come in and and, and then it's a, a couple of weeks before we talk to the person and then they're like well what was wrong with it and you're like well worked on 10 machines between now and then and and or, or maybe that many in a day and 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 you just can't remember exactly all the details but what I found to be really handy is uh, is taking the advice of the of the folks there at the uh, Brian Equipment again. That's our, our distributor, and they um, recommend using these totes. and And that, that's one thing I found super handy. I'll show you what I mean here. The, um, I really like these clear totes for this job because we can take this clear tote and put everything we need for that saw in it, and the steel engine check as well. So we're waiting on some parts for this 362, and we know right where we're at, we have a list on the back of everything we need, all the screws, all the pieces, all the parts, everything we need are in there. And then if we come back to this saw, we're like, who saw is laying on the table? Well, we don't ever have that problem because it's all in the box, the owner's name's right on top of it, all the information we need, the parts we're waiting on, everything's ready to go. So. This is a really good thing. And we just have a, a rack over here we just store them in. And then we're ready to get back to work. So for today, we have a, uh, a, a saw that has come in, or a saw that one of ours we're running it, and it, and, it, and, and well, we, we just ran into a problem with it. It, it, it quit running. So, so first things first, let's get back to the sheet here. It says here, this is a model MS. 880. Now this is the the beast of all the steel stuff in the U.S. anyway, and it's a 122 cc engine, so it is a horse. Now when it comes time for the next blank to fill in, that's going to be our model number. And again, this is super handy because if if I need to order parts or whatever, I can just snap a picture of this, snap a picture of the other side, and I have the serial number, I have everything that I need right there ready to go. So uh, all right, here's our, our date. We're going to go ahead and put 21221 there. Our serial number is right here on these uh, on most of the of the pro saws. It's hiding right in there. So this is a one seven two seven seven five three three seven. And a work order number, we, we're not going to put that on there. And uh, then, then I'm just going to put Pat here. I'm the technician on this. Now, customer comments. This is this is where it's big. So I'm going to fill this part here out real quick while the customer's standing there. And I'm going to ask you, what happened? What, what was going on with this unit when it started having problems? And they'll say, well, it was running good and quit. All right? It's running good and quit. All right, next, did you notice anything else? Yeah, it won't start back. So two, won't start back. 
All right. Anything else? No, that's it. And then the, the next thing we do on a, on, a, on a customer's machine is to, and, and I found this to be really handy, and uh, is, to, is to dump the gas out of it into a clear jar while they're standing there. Now, I, I dumped this out a while ago, and I dumped it into this bottle here, this, this can, so that uh, I could store it while I'm spilling it. So we dump the entire contents of the, of the fuel tank into this jar. Now, most of the time it's not an issue, but I like to do that, and pretty quick we'll be able to tell what's going on here. Now, I, I wanna talk about that, that for just a second while we're here. Many times we'll see something like this come out of, you'll see all that water floating around there in the bottom. That is a, unfortunately a common thing. Also, if we saw this color, what would we know right off the bat? Well, we know that that is not mixed gas. So uh, the um, we'll, we'll know something right off the bat. Now, with that being said, we're going to, I, I, I like to have that done right as soon as the customer's here. That way they can't say, well, you know, that's not my gas or my gas didn't look that bad. And, and, and most customers are not gonna be a problem. But as soon as, as you don't do it, it'll, there'll be an issue. So those are kind of the first things I like to do whenever a unit shows up. Now, with all that being said, and, and of course I'll, you know, just get a funnel and dump it right into that jar, not a big deal. So then we can take this, this check sheet and put it right there with the saw, and, and it might be an hour or two or the next day before we get to it, but we've got the information that we need right there. We have our, our fuel sample, if the tank's empty, and we're good to go. Now, so we're gonna pick up with, with starting to walk through this thing. Now our steel engine check is a, uh, again, is a super handy tool and it is best to just work right through the thing. And, and again, I, I, I'm sure this has happened to you before. You'll, you'll go through there and you'll, and you'll get down to the first problem you see and you say, oh, there's the problem I don't have to worry about anymore. Now we're good to go. But that's not the only problem. You'll get through there and, and that'll be the first problem and you'll fix that problem and you'll say, oh, I'm good. And you put it all back together. But, but that's not the way to go. What, you, you want to just completely go through the entire thing and then start fixing the problems. And again, if you're doing this for a, for a customer, then, then you're not making 17 phone calls. Hey, I think we found what your problem is. And then, then an hour later, that didn't fix it, but I think we found what your problem is. Uh, that didn't fix it. Hey, I think we found what your problem is. Instead, you can go and, and you can take this sheet, fill out the whole thing and get down to the end and you can say, okay, we found all these different items. Then you can call the customer and say, here's what we found when we did a check on your unit. We found this problem, this problem, this problem, this problem. And the, the, we wanna know if you wanna go ahead and get it fixed or you know, look at maybe replacing it. So that way they can make a better informed decision and they're not end up snowballing this thing to where it's completely out of hand. So, so we'll start here in the very beginning and we'll start going through this machine. Now, the first one is deflectors shrouds, covers. So we're looking at this thing, it, is it all pretty much here? Everything, no, no, no worn through spots. Again, people think that's just a pretty piece of plastic. That's very important for airflow across the cylinder for cooling purposes. When the fan's turning, it's directing air across that. And if there's a hole or a chunk's missing on it or it's burned through or melted from the muffler, or, we can have a problem. So we need to make sure it's all there, and all intact, not cracked, busted, and it's all there. So in this case, that one is good. We have all of our deflectors, shrouds, and covers. Now, fasteners, missing or loose. So we'll take a moment and we'll just look this all over real quick. We'll say, yeah, all those screws are in there. I don't see anything loose. Everything there looks good. I, I don't see any problems. Nothing's backed out. Everything there looks good. All right. So we just kind of give it a quick look over. Now, if we get in there deeper and we find one, you know, down inside the sluice, then we could step back and, you know, we find maybe a cylinder bolt is loose. We'll make note of that then, but uh, so far we're in good shape. Other observations, I, I don't see any problems. Everything's looking good. You know, we, we might make other observation if, you know, the, if the fuel cap was wiggly loose, you know, or, or just, you know, oil cap wiggly loose or, you know, or, again, just, just some kind of, uh, of weird thing that we'd want to uh, make note of. So we're in good shape there. Warning labels. Now our warning label says here, warning to tighten properly, turn cut clockwise. So we have that one intact. This one here is the most important one on a steel product with a chain on it. Because we, we want to make sure that they, they're aware of what's going on. And these 
these decals are available for free, so don't uh, don't be running around without that on there. The, um, we look around the rest of the machine we have right here. It's, you need these types of PPE when you're running. Also be aware of kickback. Read the manual to find out about those kinds of things. So all of the all the warning labels and everything appear to be here on this machine. So we're good. Cutting attachment. Now, now sometimes the, the, the unit will show up looking just like this. Maybe the, um, the bar clamp will, will be uh, loosely on it and no, no cutting attachment. So if that's the case, we'll just make note of that. We'll say cutting attachment um, not on unit. And uh, if it is, um, if it is on the unit, we'll mention that too. And, and what we're looking for, we're looking for maybe a, a bar or something that's horribly worn or a chain that's on backwards, you know, weird things like that, making sure everything's where it needs to be and making sure that it is approved to be run on a machine. Sometimes there's stuff made by other companies that are just not supposed to be on there. So cutting attachment, we're gonna write NA, not applicable. We don't have anything on there. Uh, belt tension and condition. Now, this saw doesn't have a belt on it. There's no belt on a, on a, on a saw. There's none on a trimmer, or a hedge trimmer, any of those. Now they are on a TS machine. So this one is NA. We don't have one of those. Next, throttle operates smoothly. Now, what we want to look at here is, is how is this throttle moving? Is it real catchy? Is it, is it doing what it's supposed to be doing? Um, make sure we're still in the... Yeah, let me, let me move you around here a little bit so you can see this part a little better. All right, we got you around here where you can see a little better. Our, our throttle should move real nice and smooth like this. The um, What we're looking for is not forget a little bit and quick and catch or something, you know, real spotty movement. This one's moving nice and smooth just like it should. So that is good. Multifunction lever works smoothly. Here's our multifunction switch. Now, it should go to these two spots just fine on a carbureted machine that's non mtronic so these both look real good no problem now to make it do the rest we have to put our, our our hand on the top go all the way down that looks right everything there looks good bump it up one it should click up and it did so everything in there is working just like it should excellent multifunction switch lever is working just like it should next our chain break so we want to check our chain break function All right, to check our chain brake function, we're gonna feel it there, yeah. That feels nice, it has a nice nice feel to it. Releases, it releases a little high, but but it's it's seems to be the meat and potatoes of it's working just like it should. All right, so we're going to uh, check on that now. All right, so our uh, throttle interlock, we had to check that a minute ago when we were dealing with our, our throttle and our multifunction switch. So we know that that thing works, but we'll just double check, make sure it's working like it should. Our trigger should not move with it up, push it down, it moves, moves like it should. So our throttle interlock works great. Other observations, looks fine. The AV system. Now, again, in this fixture, we can get a pretty good uh, hold on it and we can shake it around pretty good. And what we're looking for, since it is mounted to the engine here, we should be able to shake our handle and the rear half of it and not hear any clunking or thumping or, or weird things. And we're not seeing plastic touching plastic up in here anywhere. We're not uh, feeling it wiggle and bump. You can, you can feel them. They'll, they'll flop around pretty bad when we're having a problem there. So our AV system condition is okay. Next is our starter rope. Now for our starter rope, there's a couple things we're actually gonna look at here. Number one, we're gonna look at our handle. How's it look? Is it all beat up? It's looking pretty good. If it has a elastic start in it, we wanna make sure that our rubber piece isn't torn anywhere, making sure it's not cracked out. Everything in there looks really good. It's not dry cracked or anything, no dry rod in it. That looks all good. Now, a lot of times we have people that will throw start a saw or drop start a saw, and you'll have wear in these two spots into this metal groove. And those are both a problem. Somebody might be asking, well, what in the world is throw starting or drop starting? Well, if you see somebody grab a saw and throw it like this, or, or to, to get it start, again, that's the way I was trained to start a saw. But what do we notice here? Where is our string pulling? Our string is pulling right there on that, that piece of metal right here at an angle. Now the other one is, you, you'll see people kind of start it this way, drop start sideways. 
And and where is that wearing on our on our saw? It's wearing right there again on the side of that piece of metal. And then of course we see some people they'll lay the bar down and push it away from them on a big bar saw. Again, where is that wearing? It's going to wear right here in the back, just like throw starting. Now that will end up causing several problems. The first and, and most obvious is the safety end of it. I was watching a guy try to, on a big bar saw, push it away from him. It was a really high compression saw and, and it kicked around at him. Well, you know, he didn't have, of course he wasn't wearing leg protection either, but I mean, this could have been an ugly situation. So we wanna make sure for the safety things that we start it correctly. Again, those two correct ways are to either start it on the ground, place it down here, your leg tied up to it and pull, and pull it straight up. And when you pull straight up, where is that? Oh, it's perfectly straight. Our string is coming right out where it needs to. Or we're starting it locked in our leg, pulling straight up this way. Again, you'll notice it's coming straight out of the middle. Now, and again, even when you're doing service work, I never recommend even starting a chainsaw without wearing chaps. It just doesn't make good sense. So, the, um, so those are our big problems that we'll end up seeing with our starting rope. All right, now back to our back to our rope here. We're, we're gonna look here and we're gonna see that everything in here looks good. This saw, saw has been started with the correct starting procedure and, it's, and it hasn't been, uh, been a problem. Now, with that being said, what we'll sometimes see is a, uh, um, a, a saw that this piece will wear through completely if it's been started wrong or here and it'll start cutting the rope and you'll get a complaint that sounds like, well, I, I just put a new rope on this thing. It just keeps breaking ropes. Well, if that's the complaint, you'll look in there and see that this piece here is being worn way too much, but, and you just have to change this piece out for them. And they sell a tool and the in, inserts that you can put right in there. Now, for our rope, a couple things we're looking for. Number one, we're looking to make sure that it's not frayed. This one looks like it's in good shape. We're making sure it's the right size and diameter because, you know, a 201 rope is going to be a whole lot smaller than an 880 rope. So we need to make sure that we have the correct diameter. And the other thing is we want to make sure it's the correct length. So I'm going to pull this up through here. Okay, so here's our, our rope length. That looks pretty good. Now, if we go and pull it out and it comes out this long and, we, and we're running to the end of our rope, then we know we've got a... Uh, a rope that's been tied off short just to uh, to get them through and and of course and they may have just never got around to fixing it but that would definitely need to be replaced so when we look at our starter rope we see our our worn frayed length and diameter and we're all okay on this one no problems air filter so now we're going to back up a little bit here okay so we just took care of our starter rope. We checked for worn, frayed, length, and diameter. Everything on there was okay, so we'll mark that box.